Yeah, welcome to DBA TV, where we discuss everything international trade. Uh, in this series, you are going to be learning about what each of the Nigerian states have to offer as far as export is concerned. You know, I have maintained that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars and that they can be self-sufficient. But, you know, because a number of governors comes in with not the intention of generating income, but with the intention of sharing the money. Uh, but in this particular episode, we have put together a series of videos for all the Nigerian states from Abia to Zamfara. And this will enable the new governors that are coming in or the new administration in different states of the country to be able to take a cue from what we've shared in this video, which, by the way, covers the peculiarity of each state apart from the preamble. It talks about the profile of the profit, oh, sorry, of the debt <laughs> and income of the state. It talks about the potential of the state. It talks about the purchaser of the product the state have to offer. And of course, the pro pro exportable product and also the proposal we have for the state and how the state can directly profit from exporting raw materials, manufactured goods, uh, solid minerals, and agri commodity. I believe this will be of interest to you and maybe to your governor or the commissioner, wherever it is in your state. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your, uh, yourself as you learn through what maybe your state is what we are looking at today, what Nigerian state have to offer. Happy listening. Thank you very much. All right, as usual, we have the preamble. The peculiarities, the profile, the potential, the purchaser, the proposer, and the profit of exports to the state government. Take the state, land of honor. I don't know why they change it from fountain of knowledge. It used to be fountain of knowledge, but it seems to be changed to land of honor. With the capital in Adwekiti. Let's look at the state. This state can avoid dependence on federal allocation through export. Export is capable of boosting the GDP of this state that is said to be not viable. Export creates opportunity for SME to grow and decrease dependence on domestic markets. Export also will help the state to earn proceeds and grow revenue for the state. Export will help the state to reduce uh, to make farming and rather become more lucrative. Export is capable of helping the state to gain global recognition and become home of creativity and innovation. It's an industrial catalyst for the state because of production, job creation for youth as a result of export. It can help the state to know the value of what it has as competitive advantage. It can leave the state, leave the way for that state to follow if the state can begin to generate revenue from export. Also important to say that the state can, um, it can make the state to be independent of federal government and with and its citizens or businesses in the state can enjoy the various incentives as a result of export. It's an opportunity to maximize the synergy of the state abroad. Poverty eradication in the state is possible through export. The state can keep the league of state depending on wasting assets like oil and revive the economy of the state. It can slow down rural urban migration in the state. It's a task opportunity for exporters in the state. Utilization of idle capacity also of companies in the state. The viability of the state are boosted through export or can be boosted through export. And I will show you an example of the model we've done for equity state. Export can be a work creation tool for citizens. Also, the state. Citizen can extract the potential of the product found in the state. Yeah, for more brand or competition and zero in on their area of strength. What do you see in the state today? And what do we see in Nigeria in general? People see unemployment. And like I said every week on this program, I am not disputing the fact that these are reality of our times. I'm only saying that in spite of that reality, we can still be able to increase income in export in spite of the reality. 
we can still be able to increase interest in export. Can you see? Some people see poverty. Some people see frustration. And like I said, it's a reality of our country. But I would like us to see opportunity that is in the state in farming, and we'll look at that. Opportunities in mining and opportunities in the population of the state. What are the peculiarity of the state? Created in October 1 by Sonia Bacha out of Ondo State with capital in Adoekiti. Cover the former 12 local government area that made up the zone of Ondo State. Situated in Western Nigeria, bounded in the south by Ondo State, in the north by Kwara, in the east by Kogi, and in the west by Oshun State. He said it's mainly upland zone with a lot of hills actually, rising above 250 meters above sea level. It lies within the area underlain by metamorphic rock of the basement complex, generally undulating land surface. Generally undulating land surface. You see a lot of hills and land in the state actually. A lot of such rock exists in the Fanlai, Kereki, to Kemesi. And he said it's dotted with rugged hills. Notably is the Kera Hill and the one in Efwanlai, even Nadoekit itself. Tropical forest exists in the south, while Green Savannah occupies the northern periphery. Ekitis are culturally homogeneous and they speak a dialect of Yoruba language known as Ekiti. The homogeneous nature of Ekiti confers on the state some uniqueness among the states in the Federation. Slight differences are noticeable in the Ekiti dialect of Yoruba language spoken by border communities of the other states. Ekiti is a state in the southern West, southern West, region, South West region. Its name came out as a result of a large number of hills it possessed, which, uh, is it the Ekiti Abi? Something like that, they call it. All of them now have Ekiti at the end. It doesn't look terrible for its achievement in producing the highest number of professors. They said the uh, master's is pure water in Ekiti. So many professors. <laughs> it has a number, of, a number of major rivers and it naturally endowed with mineral deposits. The state also is home to some tourist sites like the Congo's Warm Spring, very interesting place. I was there some time ago where you see cold and warm water coming together, very hot, coming from under the ground, you know? <laughs> so the water, cold and warm come together and it becomes warm. So you have the Congo's. Congo's warm spring. It is one of the five states producing kola nut in Nigeria, producing 88% of world's kola nut. Investment exists in agri land manufacturing, healthcare, energy mining, and tourism. Total land mass is 5,044 square kilometer, have 16 local government, population of 3.4 million people, having tropical for savannah, major crop include yam, cocoa, oil palm, rice, cassava, maize, cashew, solid minerals, tin, or bauxite, tantalite, granite, and timber. Equity state, competitive advantage include special agricultural processing zone, tourist area, knowledge focused economic zone. The state, Uh, as a budget in 2020 of 124 billion, this, this state earns so little in everything. But the state has a lot of knowledge capital that can be deployed, but as usual in Nigeria, you know. I wish the state governor can do more. But I realize that um, the fact that there is federal allocation is making the state to be very, very relaxed. <laughs> Labor force, unemployment, total unemployment is 467,000 people. Working population is 
Those not in labor force is seven and eight. Those in labor force is 1,540, 550. But out of that, 1,450,000. Out of that, only 675 work more than 40 hours. That means the rest are underemployed. That means the rest are underemployed. Let's look at this state a little bit closer. The state is among states that generate less than 10 billion in a year. The state does not generate up to a billion in a month. That's a big challenge right there. In a whole year, the federal allocation of this state is as low as 47.31 billion. Add the 47.31 to 8.72, that's about 55 or 56. 56 billion in a whole year. So on the average, this state have about 4 billion to spend every month. About 4 billion to spend every month. And of course, the state is also in a lot of debt. 84 billion in Naira, 100, over 100 million in dollars. 100 million at an exchange rate of, four, of uh, 600 will be about 60. 60 billion for plus 80 billion. This state is about 140 billion in debt. The state is not doing well at all. I want to look at the IGR. You know, this is also one of the states that the IGR is less than 20%. Most states, IGR is typically 25, 26, at least more than 20. And the federal allocation is about um, 70 something. But here, about 85%. So imagine. This state, just imagine this state. If the state and see the operating expense of the state, the operating expense is 66%. 66%. Capital expenditure, 33. So that's why a state like the state is said to be unviable, non viable. Total revenue, uh, 7.72, operating expense and loan repayment 58, excess 14.01. So this state sincerely to a large extent, to a large extent, need help. But you know what I think? I think it can do much more than this. I think it will have what it takes, I mean, I know it's a little bit more because, like I said, I went to secondary school there. And uh, I have friends, a few of them in government or in the, at least with the government. But I realized the, the will to do what needs to be done, many of the gov state governors of Nigerian state are not interested. And like I've said that the reason basically is because when you have a situation where You can earn income and pay salary doing nothing. It encourages laziness. It encourages laziness. Probably that explains the reason why a lot of the governors are not interested in grain revenue. According to budget, in his report of Nigerian state, Existed in March 29 physical performance ranking, up six places from 35 in 2019. This growth is driven by positive growth in its IGR, prioritization of capital expenditure. However, the state is one of the 33 states that will be unable to finance its operating expense using IGR and VAT. It relies on a mix of statutory handouts. From the federal location, from borrowing, 
and of course from donor agencies. The state recurrent structure, recurrent revenue structure indicate a high dependence of federal distributed revenue of 84% with IGR just about 16%. This is despite the reality that the IGR has grown commendably from 299 to 8.7 year on year. So the state is growing its revenue, so we can commend PIME for that. But the state can do more by beginning to get involved in export direct. Nevertheless, it is still ranked 31st in terms of size. And as one of the smallest IGR, that is lower than the country average. The average is 4,600 per citizen, but IGR per capita in the kitty is 2,354 per citizen. The state local government cut down expenses on operating activities. Why the capital expenditure saw a commendable upturn? However, its capital expenditure per capita is 7,000, less than the national average. It is still with a total desktop of 123.88 billion, or by 4.353 from 118.19, rank 19 most in debt state. Total debt capita per capita stand at about 33,000 for every citizen of the state. Domestic debt fell by 2.52%. The total external debt increased slightly. This is it is state exposed to risk of exchange rate volatility because of the amount of dollar, uh, amount of dollar loan. But this state has potential. Yeah, the potential for income generation the potential for job creation in the state. Now, I strongly believe that export is taken seriously by the government of the state. And indeed, I said Nigeria can really do two things, increase revenue of the state government and create more jobs. So I call it export-driven income generation and job creation for the government. Export-driven income generation and job creation for the government. So let's go through it, the state. The state is likely agrarian. I call it as the mainstay of the economy, employing 75% of the working population. The state is one of the largest producers of rice. Can you see that? Cola nut, can you see that? Palm oil, cocoa in the country. They also produce cassava, yam, cocoa yam, maize, cowpea, citrus, plantain, fruits, fruit like cashew, mango, and orange. As the state is within ecological belt known for abundant forest resources, the state produces high quality wood, which are raw material for wood based industry within and outside the state. The state is endowed with mineral deposits of value like clay like cowling, like columbite, like cassiterite, like foundry, sand, like bauxite, clacomite, charconite, and granite. Major crops, yam, cocoa, oil palm, rice, cassava, maize, and cashew. Solid minerals, tin oil, bauxite, tantalite, granite, and timber. So let's go now to check. Now, I think it became the site of a large texter. I know this texter means the, the state. I know this. <laughs> the texter means is moribund, but it was a very big texter means the, the state in the AO era in 1967. And the people having a long-standing tradition of cutting weaving. The town also produced shoes like the Leonard shoes, butter shoes, and poultry. And it's a collecting point for commercial crops, like cocoa and timber, crops such as yam, cassava, corn, rice, fruit, 
are marketed locally. Agriculture providing common employment for 75% of the state, like I said. Some agriculture produce, like I said earlier, cocoa, palm, or palm, or not, palm oil, cola nut, plantain, banana, cashew, citrus, timber, arable fruit, rice, yam, cassava, cowpea, and the like. Now, when you look at this state, this state is blessed, no doubt. Question. Why is the state said to be non-viable? I think Nigerian state need to begin to see how to generate income from Expo. With that thing rate skyrocketing, it's a huge opportunity. It's a very huge opportunity. Generating income from exports. With SNA skyrocketing. Skyrocketing. But like I said, the priority of the government is really not in the area of um, including when government think of revenue, they are thinking about the increased tax rather than how to create a system that generates income for the state, even beyond the administration. So who are the purchaser of some of these products? Palm oil, for example. The state can export palm oil. $29.3 billion is the market side of palm oil. So the state can take a part of this share. Who are the buyer or purchaser? India, China, Pakistan, Netherlands, Spain, Italy, United States, Kenya, Benin Republic, Ghana. How about Africa? Out of the $29.3 billion palm oil market, Africa is importing 4.28. And the major importers are Egypt, Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, Benin Republic, Angola, Senegal, Togo, Djibouti, Mali, Another product, banana. 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 $14.2 billion market. Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, Russia, China, Japan, Canada, United States. But in Africa, the market is very small. Only $229 million. And the buyers are Algeria, South Africa, Tunisia, Senegal, Mali, Libya, Botswana, and Morocco. How about rice? There's a particular rice I know in the city they called Igbemo rice. Igbemo rice. <clears throat> that rice is produced in a particular town called Igbemo. The mainstay of that town is producing rice and they have rice meal in that particular part of the state and all the adjoining local government. $24.7 billion is the market size for rice. Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Philippines, Benin Republic, Togo, France, Germany, UK, United States, Canada, Mexico, and in Africa, a huge import of rice, 6 billion. South Africa, Kenya, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, Cameroon, Benin Republic, Ghana, Togo, Angola, Guinea, Somalia, a major importing country of this product. Cocoa beans. Cocoa beans. Cocoa beans. Cocoa beans. 9.56 billion. And my project, my, my proposal is the state can adopt one of these products partner with the private sector to produce and the state export it for itself and earn income directly. Netherlands, Belgium, France, Malaysia, Germany, US, Spain, Italy, Russia. I wonder why Nigerian state 
You know, these are some of the things that China do. Chinese government have businesses they register with private sector that they fund to do trading and they generate a lot of income for the government. I really don't understand why we are not doing this in Nigeria. No savings. The state government will finish everything and leave loan. No savings. No investment to generate income. <laughs> 52.4 million import cocoa. Netherlands, Belgium, Malaysia, United States are major importer. And Germany. For the, in Africa, just Ghana, Tunisia, Egypt, South Africa, Algeria. That's understandable because Africa produced a good chunk. Then cash in out. 7.46 billion naira and dollar. Vietnam, India, China, major importer of cash in out. Germany, Netherlands, United States, major importer of fresh and dry cashew nuts. But in Africa, 83 million by Ghana, South Africa, Togo, Tunisia, Tanzania, and Morocco, 83.1 million dollars. Then another product of interest to me is corn. Nigeria can produce more. Concurrently, we don't produce enough. So government does not allow the export of corn because we don't even have enough locally. We don't even have enough locally. And because we don't have enough locally, Government is not allowing export of this item. Government is not allowing this item. $36.3 billion. But in Africa, Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia are major importers of this item. So, like I said every week, let's look at the kitty state. So, let's take, for example, maybe the value chain for palm oil or the value chain for, let me check some of the products the kitty state produce again. Value chain for palm oil or value chain for rice, for example, or value chain for cashew, for example. These are all products the kitty state produce. I'm of the opinion that. If an SME is involved in the pro production, harvesting, and also take on primary processing and secondary processing, and also take on marketing, sales, logistics, and export, it creates inefficient value chain operator, low processing capacity and low output, few job creation, low quality and packaging, high cost of production, non-competitive product in the export market. Non-competitive product in the export market. But look at this. If the government can partner with a large corporate in a PPP arrangement, and this organization run not for profit, but generate enough to sustain it, pay salaries and maintain the equipment, let the SME take care of production, harvesting, and transport. Let the other SME take care of marketing, sales, and export. Let the SME two buy from SME one, but give it to a large corporate to process. So if I bring my palm kernel, you process into palm oil for me. If I bring my rice paddy, you process into rice for me. By the time I receive my product, it's fully ready for the export market. You create efficient value chain operator, high processing capacity and output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production and quick product in the export market. Increase job creation, decrease in equality, and decrease in security. For a state in particular, there's a new governor who is taking charge very soon. Who needs to see this? If you know someone in the Kitty State, I'll try to reach out to my colleagues and friends also there. But you know, if you can, if I pass it to that to the governor, because you know, 
Interestingly, politicians will tell you, promise heaven and earth. For you, when they get there, they'll give you a reason why. They are not able to do what they said they want to do. They'll tell you a reason why. Without telling you what they want to do. They tell, when they promise before, when they come in, and they not tell you reason why, why they will not be able to do what they promise to do. You know, be ask yourself, ah, how will you come now and be telling me the reason why you are not able to do what you are supposed to do? Why? Are you just telling me now? You know? But you told us you'll be able to do this, you'll do that. It's depending on federal allocation. Later, he now said there's no fund. How can a governor take over a state and the same because he doesn't have fund? And he has land, he has people, there is market. <laughs> And he said there's no fun. In order to, to support exporter in your state, state governors in Nigeria, to be able to enter Af uh, market in Africa, Europe, America, in a secure way, the state can do the following partner with representative at destination to market and secure contract, set up warehouse for pickup by wholesaler and retailer at destination, set up an entity agent or distributor at destination. Partner with an independent agent or distributor at destination and organize and sponsor manufacturers for exhibition in the export market. Now, that is how the state people, the government can support the business of the state. But how can the state make money directly? Let's look at Coco, for example. The Haribu land in the KDC is 243 hectares, 343,000 hectares. If 50% is devoted into cultivating cocoa at a yield per hectare of 1.5 metric tons, there is a possible yield of 182,000 metric tons. At FOB price of 2,500, which is more now, total cocoa exports, exportable, being 182,000 metric tons, this state can generate $459 million. Cost of cost farming plus cost of um, plus profit of the farmers plus cost of export and logistics put at about 18.3 billion naira. If the state decides to export commodity, converting at 419, 415 uh, exchange rate, the state can get 190 billion. In 2020, this state budget is 100 billion. 2022, 100 billion naira budget. But the state can make 190 billion only from cocoa. My question is, why is the state not thinking of investing heavily in working with the citizen to be able to export cocoa? And here is my proposal. The state can set up a special purpose vehicle in an agree ratio, the state fund, why the SPV provide expertise? SPV form farmer into cooperative across the state. SPV issue purchase order to farmers backed by BG. SPV provide training, input, and support to farmers. The SPV provide collection center for harvest, for the harvest. Also, SPV clean and process the product for export. The SPV source for buyers, do documentation and shipment. Present document to buyers bank for payment, pay farmers and share balance with the state, and the state use its share for development. The state use its share for development. The impact of the suggested model for the state government goes beyond generation of revenue. It has a humongous impact on creating employment and increasing economic activity in the state. This, in my opinion, is a more effective, and efficient, and enduring model for diversifying the economy of any state in Nigeria, particularly in this state, the state. And this model can also be replicated by federal government at the federal level, especially for the exportation of solid minerals. Especially for the exportation of solid minerals. And bye-bye.